So uh, about a month, a little actually over a month ago, um, I had some repairs done on my mouth because I had a crown that broke and they can't just patch that. They have to do a whole new crown. Yeah. So they got in and they drilled and they made a Ferengi stub and then they uh, they put you ever seen Ferengis Star Trek? Those little spikes they have for teeth. Oh, there you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you go. Um, they put a little Ferengi stub where my tooth used to be, and then they put in a temporary crown. And they're like, "Well, we're gonna make you a permanent one. You come back in about a month. We'll glue that sucker in there. It'll be eating just fine. No problems." And I'm like, "Okay, sure. I'll, I'll be back in a month." Then the apocalypse came. And at first, my dentist was like, "Oh, we'll be open in a week." And then about a week later, they're like, "Yeah, we're we're closed indefinitely." Yeah, like your job is to be all up in people's grill, putting mm -hmm. your hands in their mouths. Yeah, th we're not supposed to touch our face, but they want to touch our face. So right. Um, like I was worried about all my friends still in the cosmetic biz because that's their job too. So um. Well, a week goes by because I was supposed to have it done on the 30th. And then uh, we get to this Sunday, late night after my game stream. And I'm having a having a late night uh, bowl of uh, Raisin Bran. And um, did you know that a raisin, a freaking raisin, can apply enough um, adhesive strength to pull a freaking cap off your crap? Did you know that? I, I didn't. Did actually. I found I out. I have two crowns. I have. Hmm. Try to do this without messing up my lipstick. <laughs> down here. Do you feel? Mm hmm. Because my orthodontist from Auschwitz broke my teeth in half, taking off my braces. <laughs> so they filed what was left down a little spikes and put crowns on them. But I had the temp crown for a month, and then I had another temp crown until I was 18 and my jaw was done growing. Mm. And then I had to have a root canal through them because they did them wrong. Awesome. But I didn't have the end of the world thrown in there. No. So awesome. Yeah, the uh so I'm eating the raisin bran and off pops my cap. It's like two in the morning. So I have three choices. Um I can just sort of stick it back in and go to sleep. And, and hope risk you don't swallow it. Yeah, and then if I do, well, that's fun with feces for the next three days. Um How big is the crown? It's about like about the size, yeah, about the size of the my my my, uh, oh, so it's like a molar. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. a big one. Um, so there was that, or I could take it out and feel everything, everything <laughs> through my tooth. Because when they shave it down, there's no more enamel left. It's no, just... yeah, there's just, yeah. So that was an option. Or I could stay up all night until Walgreens opens at 9 a.m., and go and get some dental cement, temporary cement, to squish the thing back in there and then call my dentist. So I did that. I was up all night. I was freaking exhausted, but I went to the Walgreens and I got the temporary cement. Then I called my dentist. They're like, um, uh, I need help because uh, my crown popped off and it, it's painful and I won't take long. Just just come, let me come in for the 10 minutes it'll take just, to squirt please, some. Yeah. Please, with the pain. Well, she says, okay, well, I'll call, I'll talk to the doctor and I'll be right back. Okay. Three hours go by, no call. I call back and I'm like, hey, help. And she said, okay, well, I talked to the dentist and here's what she said to do. You should go to Walgreens and get some of the dental cement they have there and put that. Thanks. So I, this is what I've got to do. I've got to be very careful with it. I've got to use the temporary cement until dentistry resumes in however many yeah. weeks or months. I mean, could you just super glue it? No! And don't even say, okay, listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, you watch this live, don't listen to her. That is a very <laughs> bad thing what she just suggested. Do not put super glue in your mouth. <laughs> Especially do not put it on an enamel exposed tooth stub. Do not put the super glue and do not. Tara, Wait, you... would that sting? No, it's bad. Chemically, it's, it's not supposed to do that. I mean, I sealed up a lot of cuts with like super glue. Yes, but that's not in your mouth. It's a different thing. 
Okay. Have you glued anything to your bone? There you go. Don't, don't I do don't, that. I don't think, not that I can recall. Don't do that. <laughs> Everybody in the chair is like, oh God, no. No. <laughs> don't do this. Rubber cement? You just want to kill people, don't you, Tara? No. That's Stop. him. Stop her before she kills again. <laughs> um... So, so don't eat glue you're not a five-year-old simba eats glue he likes to lick we have to put double-sided tape on things because he likes to scratch on things and he just sits there and licks it he licks the glue off he's a glue eater cats are weird anyway so yeah that's that's where i am right now but i'm okay we're all, it's just, we're coming to find the things we kind of take for granted are not yeah. really there and it's weird and we're all adjusting. And yeah. I, it's going to be, it, this isn't like going to end soon. So we're, we're going to be different when this is over, I think. Yeah. I don't think we're ever going back to normal. Uh, I think normal is going to look a lot different. Weird times. All right. But you know what? This show. We've never we've never seen normal. We've never been normal, nope. and we're not going to start now. No, let's get the intro going. Emma, you can do it sometime today, please. I'm on the computer every week. I'm yelling at this computer. I should I should develop better macros or what the fuck ever. Anyway, you've only been doing it twenty years. Yeah, right. Still working out the kinks. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, got on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Um, we're going to start, it's almost Easter, which is, it's going to look a little different this year, obviously. You're not going to have bunches of kids out on the lawn looking for Easter eggs. So apparently, someone in Florida has decided to help. Help. Um, I want people from Florida to help. <laughs> Here's some very special help. Some Easter help. Pornographic, oh, help. pornographic Easter eggs left in Flagler County mailboxes. <laughs> I'm going to say that again because that's an amazing headline. Pornographic Easter eggs. I mean, the Christians stole the Easter holiday from the spring fertility it is, it, I mean, mis- rituals. That's why there's bunnies and eggs. Mysterious Easter eggs filled with crackers, toilet paper, and pornographic oh. photos. Well, the toilet paper is helpful. We're secretly placed in multiple mailboxes. Uh, the person who did this is not only a very sick individual, and actually be spreading COVID-19 by their actions. Dun, dun, dun. We are working to identify the offender and put them in the green roof in the jail. That's what they call their jail? Yeah, because they have a red roof in, the green roof in. is. The, yeah, I know. Welcome to, welcome to Florida, everybody. Okay. Sheriff's office received several calls about the explicit eggs. Granny deputies refu- resident said the flag in their mailboxes was left in the up position. I bet it was. When they looked inside, they found a plastic Easter egg. Inside the egg, residents found a fish-shaped cracker, one sheet of toilet paper, a powdered drink mix, and a crumpled piece of paper containing a pornographic image. So here's what they got. Okay. They're they're actually mixing it up here. So we got the fish-shaped cracker. There's your Eucharist. The powdered drink mix. There's 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 the, the sacrament. All 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 settled. The toilet paper is just being pulled neighborly. And the I don't know what you're going to do with one square, but okay. Um, it's, it's like giving somebody a quarter these days, you know, it's for bartering yeah. purposes. Um, and of course, they have the pornographic image because fertility ritual. So they're just covering all the damn bases with go. this one. I'm really not so upset. I mean, they didn't really have anything for the Jews in there. No, well. You, you, know. you could, I mean, maybe, well, maybe the fish cracker was unleavened. But 
you know, you could have put some Harusis in there because that shit is delicious. This, I, I can't be all that mad at this dude. Of all the weird shit to happen, this is kind of like the most, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll take this. <laughs> if the weirdest thing in my week is I go out to my mailbox and there's an, an Easter egg with titties in it, um, I'll take it. That, that Yeah, but like that's going to make for some awkward conversations. If you send, you know, little, little Gina out to get the mail... And she's like, the Easter Bunny came early and he left me an egg. It's going to be some awkward conversations about the Easter Bunny. Tommy, what'd you find in the mailbox? An erection. <laughs> the TP is in there for the regular business. Well, one sheet isn't going to help you much with that either. No, it's really not. It's a couple sheets of toilet paper. That, that's barter now. We're, we're trading this in, in, in the wasteland. Yeah. Do you know my? I, we've been to the the grocery store like at least three times since this has happened. Still, the toilet paper still gone. Still, he ends gone. up going on like expeditions where he goes to like four different stores until he finds it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to start doing the same thing. We stocked up, but and like he feels bad about it because he's like, I shouldn't be going to multiple places, but like we need toilet paper, right? Well, even to on to more weirdness. Hey, it's oh no, I'm about to say this is Missouri. No, Jefferson County, Pennsylvania. So that's different. Um I had this weekend, this is before like the day before our, our idiot governor was one of the last people to order the um stay at home thing. That happened like yesterday. Yeah. Um Sunday there was Saturday and Sunday there was no stay at home order. So on either side of me. Two different sets of neighbors were having loud parties. <laughs> Which is probably why the governor finally said, fine, you people ruined it. Here's a stay-at-home order. I hope you like it. And it also confused me because I thought Charleston already had the stay-at-home order. Yeah, but there's we're all, it's a whole mess with the city and state or their whether whose it's, jurisdiction. It's possible and, they just didn't give a fuck because New York has had one for a month, and all the beaches in Brooklyn are full of hipsters anyway. Yeah. Uh Anyway, so keep in mind that I kind of understand how this dude reacted. Not entirely, but you know, I can kind of understand that. Um. Stump Creek man threatened to kill man with samurai sword over loud music. Troopers in Jefferson County say a man is behind bars after threatening to kill another man with a samurai sword. According to state police, the incident happened March 19th at a home along Kramer Road. Troopers say they were called for a welfare check to determine a domestic dispute occurred. According to troopers, the victim pounded on the wall of 41-year-old Edwin Colley's bedroom because the music was too loud. Wanted Coley to turn it down. Troopers say Coley came out of the room wielding a sword and threatened to kill the man. Look, um, just because somebody does not want to hear your bass thumping, don't grab that sword. Don't. And I, I want to tell you, nine times out of ten, at least in America, when it comes to these samurai swords, samurai swords, yeah, um, they're crap. They're like yeah. they're they're like fifty dollars bought on QVC at two in the morning. You're not killing anybody with that. You're not, thing. You're, you're if it stays sharp for more than one swipe, I will be astonished. Fucking um, sword guys, man. Everybody in the channel's like, but did he study the blade? Okay. We're, yeah, like meme, 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 meme. <laughs> Dudes that just have katanas like at within reach at any given time. And I know a lot of dudes that own katanas because I'm a LARPer. Uh but I don't know, man. It's like you just you just it's living the stereotype a little bit. You know, I'm a little proud of myself. But all the guys I know who own katanas have never drawn them on anybody because they're not fucking idiots. I'm a little proud of myself because I I've I've been, you know, LARPer, geek, conventions, all that shit. And um, I, I managed to make it through my adulthood without purchasing a freaking katana. I mean, Dan has a bunch of other weird fucking weapons. He doesn't have a katana. Not he has once. A flail. 
Not once did I ever say to myself, I'm going to buy a katana. Not once. That's going to make me cool. <sighs> Ladies love a dude with a katana. Bunch of people are watching. Bunch of people are watching us on YouTube. They're looking over their katana. They're like, hey, man. Oh, the hey. comments this week are going to be amazing. Hey, man, that's not cool. Come on, man. Terrence, bitch. That's what I mean. Come on, man. That's not that's not cool, man. Uh, no, it's just I have never even I I have if someone has ever told me Sarah sometimes has to come in and tell me to turn shit down because she's a light sleeper and she has yeah. to get up. She has a daytime job where she works to help you know keep animals from not dying, and she has to come in and say, "Lo, turn it down." I'm like, "Oh shit, don't freaking turn it down." I don't I don't like react by grabbing some sort of <laughs> weapon and be you like, "You draw a sword on her." No, you turn it down. I'm not making any noise. I don't care. Your mom like turned it down. I feel like if anything in your house, you would brandish greedy at her. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell him to turn it down? You joke, but that little bastard draws blood. He's 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 most of the time he's very chill. But when you start to play with him, when he gets riled up, he he like, oh, fuck, it's it's a it's go time. It's go, go time. time. That's Peggy. Peggy never learned to play gentle. No. Well, he, she, he will, most, she will take a chunk out of you. Mostly he plays gentle until you get him too revved up that he's like, oh, you want to fucking go? No, Peggy go? goes right for blood. She's like, oh, really? Oh, really? Uh, so next up we have, where is, is this Florida again? Is this fucking, this is fucking Florida again. Far from, Mal, no, Malibu, California. Okay. Well, good. Well, wait, not good. Um, that was a ride. <laughs> People are doing all sorts of things to just flout the stay the fuck at home thing. I don't Cause know. Because freedom. I don't know why. It is, it's fucking because frustrating. Because of our freedoms, Nash. How dare they want us to not die? <laughs> Colorado, it turns out, in like the middle of nowhere areas, has a lot of like libertarians, which I should have expected, but didn't. Hmm. And man, like, we got this very nice governor. He's very competent. He's yeah. on top of shit, you know? And they are so mad. They're like, you come and, come and make me go inside, fascist. And I'm like, he wants you to not die of the plague. This is how it starts, though. No, this is how it starts. They're using this as pretense. They're, the black helicopters taking over. Bring New World Order. It's 5G. Radio <sighs> tower. It's, you, know, you don't know. You just, you'll see. I had a friend of the family tell me, look up Agenda 21. Hopefully they're not a friend anymore. No, he's a good guy. He's just, no, he's not. He's just insane. That's not good. He needs help. Let's, let's get away from that. It's bad he's, for you. He's a nice person. He's no, he's not. Crazy. He is, though. He's just a little crazy. He's a lot crazy. Dad, Dad lot is crazy. looking at you. Dan is giving you eyes, okay? But he, but he but he's a good person with a good heart. Dan met him at Christmas. He's from Ireland, so you know. Yeah, I don't think that's an excuse. That's not an excuse. I know I know people in the U.S. who are as crazy as he is. It's the true, Prime so. Minister of Ireland just stepped down so he could well temporarily so he could be a doctor again. Yeah, he's doing one shift a week. Yeah, being from is Ireland cool. is not an excuse, okay? <laughs> Which I think is cool. And he said he's using the time to talk to doctors and see what they need, which I think is very cool. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, speaking of people evading the, I don't want to stay at home. You stay at home. It's freedom. Um, paddle border arrested at Malibu, Malibu Pier for flouting state order to stay at home. Paddle border was arrested in Malibu Thursday after ignoring lifeguards orders to get out of the ocean. Mid social distancing rules. Lifeguards flagged down deputies for assistance, but the man ultimately chose to stay in the water alongside the Malibu Pier for all about 30 to 40 minutes. Come back here. No, you're going to yell at me. That doesn't count as washing your hands, by the way. <laughs> God, no. Um, deputies summoned their patrol boat. Then the man swam to shore once it arrived. What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? I'm in the water. What are you going to do? Oh, shit. <laughs> he was subsequently arrested on suspicion of disobeying a lifeguard and violating Gavin Newsom's stay-at-home order, a misdemeanor. 
Um, face a thousand dollar fine, up to six months in jail, or both. I kind of appreciate they're taking this shit seriously. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, and most places are being remarkably lenient about this. They're like, look. If Gavin you, Newsom is not playing around. Even still, it's like, look, if you got to go to the grocery store, we're cool with that. If you got to go to the freaking Lowe's to pick up something because something in your house broke, we're cool with that. If you got to go to the doctor, we're cool with that. Most of the stuff we're cool with. Not paddle boating. What the? What? That's not essential. <laughs> No, there's essential is be just that's that's not a thing you need no, to do. No, don't. I'm I'm just mm. so, yeah, Gavin Newsom is not here to play. He's starting little alliances with other states because the feds are bidding against them for shit. Yeah. So he's starting a consortium of states to work together. Man, imagine a United States, if yeah. you will. Wow, that's a concept. Wow. Neat. Um, let's see, what else is happening? Um, this is that Peggy oh. Ellen. Yeah. Peggy. This oh, I'm having some Schadenfreude here. This is from LA, and uh this this made me happy. Um, so we have we we've got I've been seeing it on social media. It's driving me crazy. Landlords are not happy about the current situation because they're like, yeah, well, you don't have a job and you don't have money, but I want money. Right. Um, give me money. I don't have a job either. I live off you guys. Yeah. Um, so they're not having a good time. They're being kind of butts right now. Um, not all of them. Some of them are being very cool. Some of them. But some, some of them are being giant festering dick sores. And this particular dick sore, a little bit of a... Come here, Peggy. Peggy's howling because she's lonely. This, this, this particular set of dick sores um, had a uh, little bit of a comeuppance. I love stuff like this. Landlord sent an email blast of 300 tenants telling them to pay rent. It inadvertently helped them organize a rent strike. Leading up to rent day on April 1st, some workers around the country called for rent strikes. Um, tens of million workers have filed for unemployment. Saturn Management, a property management company in Los Angeles. Wow, not only rent, not only are, are they landlords, they're, they're they're middlemen landlords. That's yeah. Um, tried to stem a strike Tuesday, telling its tenants by email they were still required to pay rent, but the message backfired. Instead of sending a blind carbon copy or BCC to each tenant, in case you didn't know, that's what CC. In an email means carbon copy. That used we used to be able to take. There were sheets of paper called carbon paper, and you put one sheet of carbon paper between two pieces of paper, and you write on it, and it would write through. So you could. So that's where we get the term also carbon before copy. Actual copy machines, right? You'd run a piece of paper and a piece of carbon paper through a thingy. <clears throat> yep, and that's back in the Stone Age when we grew up. And that's what they call. That's what CC stands for. BCC means blind carbon copy. It means everybody gets a copy, but they don't see everybody else's email address. Except they didn't do that. The email was sent to the group collectively. That meant 300 tenants all had each other's contact information. <laughs> email chain offered a venue for them to complain about health and safety issues. Now the tenants have started organizing a red strike. Which could begin in May. They're communicating in group chats on a shared document where they collect further complaints about the proper. <laughs> Good job. It's like, did, did you ever see the guy that went viral because he like texted 30 women at the same time on Tinder? Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. I mean, dude, when you give people, it's like, don't organize. All of you, yeah. here, here's a copy of everyone's names. Don't we're you dare get, organize. We're going to get everybody in a room, and I'm going to tell you not to talk to each other. And <laughs> I'm going to leave. And I'm just going to trust that you're all going to leave, too. <laughs> oh. Cool. It's, it's just... <laughs> Bless your fucking hearts. <laughs> 
I just, uh, you needed something to make you a little happy right now. That makes yeah. me fucking happy. You love it when the bad guys are dumb. <laughs> Cheryl, what does CC stand for? Does BCC mean before Christ? What is this? Oh, before, before Christ, everything was AOL. What? Where's the Eddie key? Damn it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Good job. Next up, amazingly, even with all this going on, we still somehow I, w I was actually a little bit concerned when all this started. I was like, wow, is this going to stem the tide of like our normal kind of stories? Is this going to be yeah, all... Yeah, if people can't leave the house, can they not go to Walmart and get naked? Is this going to be the all, you know, you know, virus quarantine edition all the time? Well, no. Because life finds a way. <laughs> Woman in undies dances in road swings golf club. Indian River County, Florida. There are places where it may be appropriate to strip down to your undies and start dancing. The middle of a street just west of US-1 is not one of them. But that's where Indian River County Sheriff's investigators went shortly after 6 p.m. on March 26th. Investigators arrived at an address, uh, the 2400 block of 43rd Street, after a report of a, quote, intoxicated subject. I always love how, how just politely they are about it. Yeah. Intoxicated subject. Fucking drunk is what that means. Um... <laughs> They were told of a woman who, quote, appeared to be under the influence of an unknown drug as she actively took her clothes off in the roadway. The woman, later identified as 20-year-old Vero, uh, a 25-year-old Vero Beach resident, we're keeping her name quiet, arrived in a red pickup. After the female stripped herself down to her underclothes, she began swinging a golf club and dancing in the middle of the roadway. Now, you know what makes this story a Will Greenlee story is the very next line. Is it Will Greenlee? It is. The affidavit did not state whether the club was a driver, wedge, putter, or iron. Damn it, Will. I am putting... We need to know. I am putting Will Greenlee in my will. <laughs> he is. He's getting something. When I die, he gets... Because I owe this man. We all owe this man. He... We just... My, dr my dream is to someday have Will Greenlee on the show. Yeah, because the thing about what we, we can do, do is like a Will Greenly retrospective. We are aggregators, is what what we are here on this show. We don't actually go out and do the research and reporting. We 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 look through the reports. We come up with the interesting stuff. We we tell tell you about it, but we don't do the footwork. Will yeah. Greenly is the hero behind our nonsense because he actually gets out there in in the dregs and finds this stuff. This he, is this man's calling. He does this for us. He is a good man. Nor did it specify the type of di dance, such as the Foxtrot, Charleston, Running Man, Cabbage Patch, Stanky Leg, or the Floss. <laughs> Deputies reported... We don't know if it was any of those. We don't know. Deputies reported... Been. The woman paced around in her undie undies, sw slurring profanities at passersby. Because I expect... What, what else was she going to be doing? Soliloquies? Yeah. So <laughs> you, you can't dance. She could be like giving us a sonnet. Of course, she's freaking fucking fuck, fucking fuck. That's what, of course, she's what she's doing. In our last story, this is terrible and wonderful and terrible again. And it is so us. It gives me, when I see stuff like this still happening, it gives me a little hope that we're going to be okay in a weird, screwed up way. It gives me a little hope. This is from Seattle. Man arrested after teaching his dog to drive a Buick 100 miles per hour. <laughs> oh, dear. A Washington State man riding shotgun in an old Buick was arrested after fleeing a hit and run incident, leading police on a high speed chase on an interstate freeway. Meanwhile, the driver and his pet bull got off scot free. Such was the scene Sunday near Seattle police arrested a 51 year old man who told them he was teaching his dog how to drive man was apparently no. steering the car from the passenger seat well 
Well, then the dog wasn't really driving, was he? Reports say the man who's, well, he was trying. Reports say the man whose name was not released was driving his 1996 Buick on Interstate 5 when he allegedly struck two vehicles. Uh, the car was spotted on the interstate uh, and officials told uh, KOMO TV the vehicle was driving more than 100 miles per hour when they began pursuit. Vehicle left the freeway uh, 57 miles north of the hit and run and then drove into the nearby Centennial Trail, a rails-to-trail bike path. Chase engine after police were able to deploy the strike spike strips. Police found the man seated in the passenger seat and the dog behind the wheel. Okay, I want to give this man credit for the hustle. Because no, no well, no, when, when he when the cops pull up to the car and the window rolls down and there's a dog for a split second. <laughs> Everybody there, everybody theirs has. Wait, can we, can we give the dog a ticket <laughs> for a split? So the, I appreciate the hustle. You tried, man. You tried. Someone didn't watch enough tunes. <laughs> <laughs> How is it that it's like what thirty years later and fucking tunes is still fucking relevant? How is that? Because it's shit like this. It keeps happening. Because. This dude thinks his dog's going to drive him around. Wishbone went rogue, man. <laughs> the poor dog was just like, I don't, I don't know what's happening. He was having an, a, having an adventure. What, you know what? I, I, you say that, but we've driven around with our, with Loki, our dog, and he loved it. He didn't care what was happening. He loved it. He loved every single minute of it. Yeah, it was the best. You probably didn't have him working the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> you probably just let him stick his head out the window and let his tongue flap around in the wind. Well, no, we don't let him stick his head out the window because he's stupid enough to jump out the window. Fair. He, we have to, to strap his butt in because otherwise he'd go, Oh, hello, friends! I want to meet you! He almost did. Oh. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. Well, and it says he was arrested for DUI. <laughs> So apparently he was fucking drunk trying to teach his dog how to drive. Which kind of makes sense. I'm picturing this as like the gritty reboot of the Shaggy DA. <laughs> <laughs> no. Remember that old Disney movie? Yeah. Where like the overworked lawyer who doesn't have time for his family gets turned into a dog to force him to make time for his family. This is the gritty reboot. No, because because. You know, I can understand getting drunk and having a stupid idea like this. I have had many stupid ideas when I was drunk. It's or getting stoned and you're like, hey, man, what if dogs could drive, man? I just they never wouldn't, followed they through. Wouldn't have to, like Uber home. Yeah, I just have the dog drive me because if the dog's driving, then it's not a DUI. Yeah. And I could like start my own business and make more money than Uber. And I, we call it like Fido. I've had plenty of stupid ideas when intoxicated. I never did them. This is somebody needs to look, just take back the impulse control just a wee bit. Because if you're putting your dog in the driver's seat, you have a big problem in your life. That's not even like a natural position for a dog to be in. Because for him to work the pedals, he has to be like with his feet down and leaning back and like... People are like, Shaggy DA, check Disney Plus. It's probably there. Every fucking Disney It's probably on there. And they did like a shitty reboot with Tim Allen not long ago. Maybe 10 years ago. Uh, shitty reboot Tim with Allen Tim Allen. Shitty reboot with Tim Allen is my cover band's name. Uh. <laughs> Back when <clears throat> Tim Allen was still relevant, they did a reboot of it, I think. Yeah. Maybe it was Kevin Spacey. One of those assholes. <laughs> so many of them. So the first thing we learned this week is your dog has no interest in driving. No. You can he have to stick his head out the window and flap his tongue around in the wind. There is no there is no law against having a stupid idea. There is there are many laws against implementing a stupid idea. Yes. Um we've learned this week that even in the midst of all this, somebody's gonna get naked in public. 
Thank God. <laughs> it's a little reassuring. Comforting. Strangely, that people are still gonna. It's like like you know, we, the indomitable human spirit. Even in the face of a freaking pandemic, we're going to go out, get drunk, and scream obscenities at passersby because, damn it, we're the human race. You know why? Freedom. Because this is America, damn it. I'm, I'm getting flashbacks to the end of the world's end, but um, <coughs> uh, we've learned that... Uh, if you don't want the people who you're exploiting to organize, don't introduce them to each other. Yeah, maybe don't help. A little bit. Um, we've learned that <laughs> there are a lot of good reasons not to stay home during all this. Um, splashing in the ocean is not one of them. That is leg not day, a leg day. Not one of them. Leg day is not one of them. Oh wait, I'm thinking of paddle boats. Paddle board is this thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've learned way too many people we know have samurai swords. Yeah. And, uh, finally we've learned... I mean, he has nunchucks. You have nunchucks, right? Yeah. But not like a katana. All right, so he's not Leonardo, but he's Michelangelo, so... Um... Terrence, you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's okay. I know you're talking about Ninja Turtles. That's okay, Terry. It's all right. But I don't know the difference between any of them. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Tara, do you just want the comments to be like 30 pages long? Some fucking jerk at my college used to call me April O'Neil for four fucking years. He knew my name. He just called me April O'Neil because he was a fucking jerk. So fuck the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Finally, this week we've learned um, the Easter Bunnies... Uh, taking a little bit of a esoteric approach this year. Easter Bunny is taking quarantine pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> Hippity hoppity porn is on its way. Yeah. <laughs>